the dossier on candidate J.D. Vance, stolen from the Trump campaign via Iranian hackers, is now being censored by big tech. According to Ken Klippenstein, the largest internet companies, Meta and Google, have been accused of having a left-wing bias, laugh along with me, decided to restrict access to Ken's article containing said document. Now, of course, Meta is claiming that, hey, we only restricted it because it came from Iran, uh, who is trying to influence our elections. Yes, of course they are. <laughs> the same as the Russians, the same as the Saudis, and the same as the Israelis, along with the Turks. Hell, I'm pretty sure most countries are, or if they could, would attempt to influence our elections, because let's, let's be honest about this, okay? Um, if a country has money, they're going to try to influence our elections, okay? Uh, because our, look, our elections are kind of corrupt. Our electoral system, our system of money in politics, for example, does invite corruption. Uh, now, that said, um, turns out foreign policy from the United States is actually pretty, a pretty big deal, right? Uh, now, it doesn't make it right, of course. I wish they didn't try to influence our elections, but they do. They do. Uh, okay, so now that said, just because, for example, Russia stole Hillary Clinton's emails doesn't mean that they weren't newsworthy. It's the same thing here, okay? Just because Iran stole internal Trump campaign documents that does not make the contents of those documents any less newsworthy, all right? That dossier contains information on potential weaknesses as a vice presidential candidate. Regardless of where it came from, that information is pretty, pretty newsworthy. And look, there's no indications that it was tampered with either. All right. So now that said, major media sat on it simply because of who released it. Okay. Media is like, oh, yeah, no, we, we, we know it. We have this, but we're not going to report on it. And that's that's disastrous. Okay. Now, the same reason... Um, that the media didn't release it was also why Meta decided to block access to it as well. We don't want people to know. We don't want people to be influenced. Well, how influential, for example, was Hillary Clinton's emails? I would say it didn't really influence the election very much. It was newsworthy, but did it actually get people who were going to vote for Hillary Clinton decide not to? No. I don't believe that at all. Uh, now, that said, uh, Klippenstein believes that uh, the reason that Meta has decided to block this uh, is that they uh, believe the American people are not smart enough to account for the fact that it's stolen data. And I think he makes a great point on that. Okay. Now, that also flies in the face of assurances by Meta made as recently as August. Okay. That, oh, oh no, we're, we're not going to uh, censor political content. And we're not going to uh, censor content for political reasons. In fact, Meta's president of global affairs, Nick Clegg, told Congress, quote, I think we learned our lesson, certainly as Meta is concerned, that in the heat of the moment when governments and its governments are, uh, and governments around the world exert political pressure on us on particular classes of content, which are particularly focused on, we need to act always. And we strive to do this. But of course, we make mistakes. We need to act independently, and we need to be resistant to the sort of passing moods and passions around particular bits of content, which was particularly the case during the pandemic. People were, in effect, in a panic. Well, okay, wait a minute, though. Uh, by that logic, you have con contradicted yourself by allowing the U.S. government's view of Iran to cause you to center political information because of the source. Again, it was, yes, hacked by Iran. They, yes, did something uh, and, and got into uh, Donald Trump's campaign and stole these files. Did, they didn't alter them. They just released them. And the media is like, oh, can't do that. Can't report on it. Can't talk about it. Because it's, it's from Iran. Oh, look, I don't like Iran. I think they're a, re, re, a, a repressive fundamentalist government. 
and that funds terrorist organizations. They do. I despise their government. I despise the Putin regime in Russia. But information is information. And if it is newsworthy information, then it deserves to be out there in the news. That's it. But Meta is doing exactly what it said it wouldn't do, which is remove content for political reasons. Okay. Uh, maybe so that they, they don't embarrass the U.S. government. I don't know. Or <laughs> more like embarrass Donald Trump. Um, now, that said, X actually went further. Okay. Uh, I reported um, on Thursday that Elon Musk had banned Ken Klippenstein from their uh, platform for even posting a link to the Substack article. Not posting the actual information, just saying, hey, this is a link to my Substack where I actually have the information. Okay. So now Musk claimed that uh, Klippenstein had broken rules about, oh, private information. Wait, that's actually public information. <laughs> okay, campaigns buy and sell that information literally all the time. Okay, so it's a BS excuse. Okay, because we know that Elon Musk is 100% in favor of Donald Trump. And this is a potentially embarrassing leak. Uh, now, that said, at the end of the day, I think the reason, aside from Musk, um, that big tech, tech is doing this is because the federal government is still, again, pretty mad about 2016 and the Russians interfering in our election. So of course the national security states like, oh no, no, no. Uh, now we're being hyper vigilant uh, against, not, not against the, the you know, companies or, or, or the countries. No, no, no. We just don't want information that might hurt a particular campaign getting out in the public. Oh, if it's from a foreign source, right, okay. Now, they're hypervigilant about some countries, though, trying to influence our election, like Russia and China uh, and, and Iran, but they're not really uh, focused on others. <laughs> Why do I say that? Israel. Israel meddles in our elections all the time. You have uh, PACs like APAC, the Democratic Majority for Israel, okay? Uh, this is all uh, pro-Israeli PACs backed by right-wing billionaires that spent millions of dollars in Democratic primary elections. So, uh, with a devastating effect, by the way. Is the government saying anything about that? No, of course not. In fact, if you try to point that out, you're, uh, uh, you're automatically labeled anti-Semitic. Because you're against PACs that represent a foreign country influencing Democratic primary elections. And by the way, not, not even talking about Israel itself. No, 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 no. They're, they're talking about, oh, yeah, uh, guess what? Uh, Medicare for all will bankrupt you and your family and everybody. And it's going to destroy health care. That's the stuff that they run on. That's the stuff that the ads they make. And, and of course, there are other things where they've made up uh, information, made up facts, uh, alternative facts, if you will. Uh, they darkened Cori Bush, okay, in, in her portraits. So, I mean, that's some just real garbage stuff. Uh, but hey, again, our government doesn't say anything about that. No, about stopping them from influencing our elections. Of course not. Of course not. It's only Iran, Russia, China, countries that we happen to not like. Hmm. Uh, I see. I see. Now, worse off, of course, as I said, they're sitting on newsworthy information, uh, 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 you know, on, on a, from a dossier stolen by Iran. Now, they happen to be Israel's big opponent. I'm sure that's not an accident. No, it, it, again, it's not really a surprise to see our government putting pressure on big tech to keep stuff under wraps. They've been doing this for a while, okay? Yes, they, they even put pressure on Twitter to, uh, you know, when it was Twitter, to not share certain things about the laptop, if you can remember, Hunter Biden's laptop. You know what they were trying to do, though? To not have the revenge porn from the laptop be disseminated. So I get that. Uh, this was all part of Elon's so Twitter files, the Twitter files, which really didn't show a whole lot. Now, I wonder if there's going to be a Twitter files on this. The answer, of course, is no, <laughs> there will not be. 
no one will question this at all because Iran bad. Trump campaign good? I mean, that's certainly how they seem to be painting this. Um, again, with these uh, with these leaks. Not a surprise, though. Uh, but what what really is is the big problem here is tech companies who made such a big deal about not folding to pressure from the government, immediately folding to pressure from the government when it comes to something that could potentially hurt Trump's campaign and also from a geopolitical foe of the United States. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shut down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.